Hi everybody, welcome again to Luxaflex product training by video conferencing. Today's session is going to cover our Louvered awnings. Now in our Louvered awning range we have two products. We have Trinidad which has a 100mm flat panel and we had a SunGuard which is an 89mm flat C-section panel. So the two different size louvers, a little bit different, uh, different systems and we'll talk through them now. But we're going to go with our Trinidad first and Trinidad would be probably the most common louvered awning that we sell. And it comes in two styles. It comes as a fixed louver and it comes as an adjustable louver. What we've got behind me here on display is actually a adjustable Trinidad, which we'll look at a little bit later in the presentation. We'll talk through the installation of that. But we'll start off quickly by talking about fixed louver. So fixed louver obviously is getting louvers attached <coughs> to a structure and the louvers are in a permanently fixed position, so they're not operational. Trinidad fixed louver comes in two set angles. 45, we'll see you at the bottom section, and 60 at the top. So you can see we classify the 60 as virtually a closed off option, although there's still light and air going through, and the 45, obviously a little bit more open, allowing more light and more view through. Now it really depends on the angle of the sun and the position that you want the light and the, and the sun to come through as to which option you would go for. But we probably find the 45 degree for domestic applications is probably the most common out of the two. So as I said, <clears throat> fixed louver, 45 position open or 60 degree in the closed position. But then we have the adjustable louver. Great thing about the adjustable louver is that you get from a minus 10 to a plus 75 degree angle off the horizontal plane. So whilst we'll look at the one behind me a bit later in the presentation, this little hand sample here shows how it operates. We have a little winch box which is attached to our stringer. So the vertical section here that it gives our structure to the actual awning and the part that holds the louver is referred to as our stringer, which are usually vertical. Winch box, winder handle, and you can see just by that there that I can go right up to that minus 10 degrees, which is fantastic, particularly in, particularly in winter, where you want that lower winter sun to be coming through to give you the warmth, but then you have the option of going all the way down to that 75 degree down position, which is pretty almost completely sealed off. Not waterproof by any means, but blocking out all that direct heat and all that direct sun. So your adjustable louver is there. <clears throat> so they're the two Trinidad systems. As I said, 100 millimetre louver panel. We have a minimum and a maximum overhang. So when you look at the stringer, as I said the stringer is this component here. This is the louver. The maximum that you can hang a louver over that last stringer is 300 millimetres, and the minimum you need is 50 millimetres. And if you look behind me here, you can see we've actually overhung our louver here by about 200 millimetres. As I said, minimum 50, because we do have a nice clear plastic end cap which fits into the end of the louver. Obviously, if the stringer was right at the very edge of the louver, we wouldn't be able to put that cap on. The adjustable option gives you external or internal control. For external control, we just have our winder handle here directly clicked into the little winch box, which you get on the stringer. Now, depending on how many stringers you have, you will have a winch box on each stringer. I could connect that little handle into any one of those winch boxes. We connect them with the shaft. And again, we're going to go through that a little bit later. Trinidad's are great. These louver panels can be installed normally horizontally, like we've got here but you can install them vertically and you can even do them in overhead positions. But just keep in mind, this is not a waterproof product, not designed to keep water and rain out. It's purely a sunshade awning. So the sun guard. Sun guard is a little different. It has fixed angle only at a set angle of 65 degrees off the horizontal plane. Now this is a little sample here. The string here is a little bit different. This is a UV stabilized polymer 
wrapped an extruded aluminium beam and these slide down inside the beam and the louvers click on. They have a 76 millimetre pitch, the 89 millimetre louvers, and they'll give you really good um, light block out and really good sun protection, but they're in that fixed position. This is a lower cost option than the standard fixed Trinidad. So something that's worthwhile keeping in mind. The swatching guys, I wanted to point this out as part of this presentation because we have lots of different metal awning product and we have swatching for our head boxes in our canvas awning, so our System 2000 and our standard auto. So you would have a Luxaflex metal awning swatch as we refer to it or Luxaflex metal awnings collection. Obviously the colours that the louvers are available in, in both the Trinidad and the Sun Guard are in this swatch. Now, you actually have a legend here. Now, the legend here says, and if we look at Trinidad just for an example, Trinidad tells me that I have a, uh, an, an open box. So the outline of a square box, white in the middle, any colour with that symbol next to it is available in Trinidad. Not every colour in this swatch is available in Trinidad. Certainly not every colour is available in SunGuard. And not every colour that is available in Trinidad is available in SunGuard. So you do need to be very careful and use this correctly to make sure you're using the legend and selecting the colours only that are applicable to each product. <clears throat> measuring. When we come to measuring awnings generally, measuring awnings is fairly straightforward. When we get to louvered awnings, it's important to consider where we're going to fit the awning and the awning fit kit that we're going to use <clears throat> before we actually work out where we're going to measure to and what size we're going to order the product. So I want to quickly talk through the different fit kits so you understand what you should do in different circumstances. Do we have fit kits that range from A through to H? So I'm quickly just going to hold each one of them up and talk you through what they are. And the first one, obviously, is Fit Kit A, which is our fascia kit. So this is Fit Kit A. We're just looking at the, the back part or the part that holds the stringer. We're not worried about what louver we've got at the front here. We're just talking about our arm and our fixing for the main stringer. Fit Kit A, <coughs> fascia. So it's designed for the top to fit directly on the front of the fascia, so directly underneath the gutter. So in this scenario here, let's presume that's our fascia. I've got this bar coming up there and I'm going to secure it through the face of the fascia. And then I have an arm here, which I'm going to then support the arm back to the wall. Fairly common fit kit A. Fit kit B was if I wanted to fit underneath the eave, still have an arm that goes back to the wall, but I want to fit underneath the eave. Now, this is fit kit B. B comes in three different derivatives, only because I may not be able to fit directly in that position because I don't have some, I guess, a, a noggin behind inside my, inside my eave. So I may want to run a piece of 19 millimetre square bar and fit my U bracket to the top of that. I might want to run a piece of timber there and fit to that. <clears throat> so whilst fit kit B are all the same, we're fitting under the eave, we'll have an arm that goes back to the wall. <coughs> Excuse me. There'll be different options for the top. Fit kit C gives us the ability to put a little hood on it. So we're going to have an arm that projects out like we've got here. An arm projecting the top, an arm projecting the bottom, but we can put a little hood on it. So our fixed aluminium Bahama hood works really well. So in that scenario here, obviously we have our arm going back to support at the bottom. Our top arm is set at a slight angle. These are designed for face fit onto a wall of some description. And then we have the Bahama hood, which can sit here to do two things. One, obviously, give you some protection from the sun and also give you some rain and water protection as well. Bahamas come in panels. The maximum panels you can do on a Bahama hood is four connected panels. 
great if you've got windows that are hinged and swinging out, those casement style windows. So that's your fit kit C. Fit kit D, similar in the sense that it's got two arms projecting the, projecting the actual main awning out, but fit kit D gives us more structure and, and, and stability to the frame itself. And it does that by adding two hat sections. Now, a hat section is what we run along the back, and it's called hat section because it is shaped like a hat. This actually gives us two pieces running the width of the actual awning frame. Now we do that because, as I said, it gives more strength and stability to the overall frame. And we use it if we need to span over a wider distance. Let's say we have a window of two metres. We have to have a stringer. The maximum distance between the stringer is about 1,200, depending on the style of awning and the application that you're fitting it to. But we may not be able to support the middle stringer back to the wall because it may be in the middle of a glass window and there's nowhere to secure it to. So we can have a floating stringer in the middle, providing we're running hat section top and bottom along the width, along the width of that awning to give it that structural integrity that it needs. So fit kit D is your stable structural doubled hat section kit. Now fit kit E and fit, and fit kit F are essentially the same thing. But what they do is Fitkit E enables you to have the awning louvers start above your arm fixing point. So what I mean by that is this is Fitkit E. We have the arm here to go back to the wall, but I've taken my louvers up higher. So I've got an extra louver sitting above. You may want to get more coverage, but your arm fitting point might be a little bit lower. So if you compare that to Fitkit F, you can see that looking at the screen on your left, my arm is right at the very top of the stringer, and on your right, Fitkit E, obviously this arm is a little bit lower to give us coverage above that arm mounting point. Likewise, the last two kits are essentially the same in the sense they don't have any arms. These are Fitkit G and fit kit H. Now, these are just gonna have a stringer. So you've got the stringer, in the case of fit kit H, we've just got a U bracket at the top, a U bracket at the bottom, and we would be fitting it in a scenario here where we've got a top fitting and a bottom fitting, and not having any arms go back to support on a wall. Fit kit G is exactly the same, but instead of top and bottom fixing, it's face fit flat on a wall and we would provide hat section top and bottom. Soon as you want to start to project further away from the wall, you need to move to the other fit kits to actually enable you to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Any questions or comments there? I think it's one of the areas where people do get caught up is the different fit kits, because then you have to specify the kit that you want when you order the product, because it'll determine how we're going to fabricate the stringers and the arms. So, when we look at how wide we want to measure an awning, if we're measuring really close to the window, we still recommend measuring past 150 millimetres either side. So, if I was only 150 millimetres off a window, I want to add 300. As soon as I start to measure out here when I'm out on the fascia or on the outer edge, I really want a minimum of 300 millimetres over each side because the further I'm away from the window, the more chance of sun creeping in behind and hitting my window. So to get the best possible coverage, we recommend minimum 300 millimetres over each side. If you're measuring from under the eave, obviously, you'd measure from under the eave to the desired drop. If you're measuring on a brick wall, which is above a window, we'd say measure two bricks minimum above the opening of your desired drop, and that'll be the overall height that you'll give us. <clears throat> As I said, the further out from a window you measure, the higher and wider you need to measure. Just the angle of the sun coming through means we want to give good coverage wherever we can. 
Look, in some situations, you might even want to have infill louvers along the top. So here, for instance, not in this scenario here, because let's pretend this is an eave, but if you wanted to run louvers, this arm was here, you wanted to run louvers along at the top at the angle, you can certainly ask us to do that as well. So as I said, what we've got behind here is an adjustable Trinidad louvered awning. We've gone with silver pearl, which is one of the more modern colours. Several years ago now, we introduced some nicer colours, black, the silver pearl, just to give the product a more modern look. It is that louvered look. It's very much the look that people like these days with shutters and things of that nature. And it can actually look quite good on a modern home. Well, so we've fitted this to a wall with a 200 millimetre projection. We've had to specify the control height here, and it's something that you'll need to do when you order and measure as well. So we've told the factory we want our external control to be 500 millimetres up from the bottom to the handle height, so, and that's exactly what that is. They need to know where to position these winch boxes on the stringers. When we actually measure to determine where an awning is going to be installed, as I said, we have to be conscious of the fit kit that we're going to use. Now, what we did was we actually built this awning on the ground. So when it comes to you from the factory, it's in a knockdown form. All the panels or the louvers will all be pre-packed in a box, nicely wrapped so they're not scratched and damaged. They'll be in one package and all the other componentry will be in the other package. And for those of you that may have had some experience with a Meccano set as kids, this is just like screwing and bolting together a Meccano set. The top arm here, which has our triangular support, that will be separate to the stringer, but it will be pre-drilled and it will be numbered. So attaching that arm to that top stringer, straightforward. Fitting the bottom arm, fitting the hat section, Fitting the brackets and everything is up to you to do on site. So none of that comes pre-drilled. All the fixing hardware to join it together is supplied, and we've just and you'll be supplied with little set screws and um, and nuts, and it's a really simple, straightforward process. But you want to build this on the ground. So obviously what we did was we got our two stringers, we knew what our overall width was, we measured in 200 millimeters. We've got our hat section here as well. Again, we've measured so we have a 200 millimetre overhang of the hat section. We've fitted our hat section to our stringers, our arms, even our U bracket. Now, the U bracket is this bracket here. This bracket will be the bracket that predominantly you're going to use to fix the awning to a wall or to a eave ceiling or to the floor. These all need to be configured pre-drilled. So you do all that on the ground before you do anything else. So you've done all that, and then you measure the actual positioning of your arms, come up to your wall, mark your wall, and obviously then fit these brackets. Now, obviously, if you're using, um, if you're fitting to masonry or brickwork, you're going to use your roll plug and your appropriate screw. And if you're into timber, pre-drill and use some, obviously, some nice coarse wood screws. Those fixings aren't supplied. The only fasteners you get are the fasteners to actually build the product together. Fitting it to the wall, those fasteners you have to provide yourself. So we've done that. We've come along, we've popped it in, and we've popped in our brackets, and that awning goes up. Very light construction. It's all white, as you can see as well, and I know we spoke about different colours in the swatch, but all of the componentry, the arms, the U-brackets, the actual part that the louvers click onto is all white. <clears throat> As is the inside of the C-section panel. Obviously on the outside we've got silver pearl, but the inside is white. So the colour that the consumer sees from inside the home looking out is white. And we don't offer a custom paint colour on any of this. So you will always be white on all of this componentry. As I said, fitting the stringers and the brackets, depending on what you're actually um, uh, uh, um, adhering to, will determine what you use. As I said, we supply the screws for putting all this together, and even the hat section. So the hat section is fitted with 
12 mil by 12 gauge screws, one at the top, one at the bottom, just to fit that hat section to the actual stringer. And the hat section is critical. The hat section really gives stability and keeps it squared off. The hat section, the rod which connects the winder mechanisms, they come at exactly the same width that you order the awning. So they come at the same width that the panels come at. What we've done here, we've actually chosen to fit our hat section different to the actual bottom arm. If you looked at or saw on some of the fit kits, like if we look at this one here, you'll see that we've got the hat section attached to the stringer and then that arm attaches to the hat section. You can do it like that or you can do it like this. As long as you've got the hat section in place for stability, it doesn't make any difference to how that obviously is supported. So we've installed the arms. What we then want to do for an external handle, which was what we've set up here, as I said, the square shaft that's provided to link up all of those winch boxes, one attached to each stringer. You obviously slide that through. It's a square section shaft. It's pretty easy to slide through. It is provided with two little ratchet washers. Obviously, once you've slid that shaft in, you'd put one of these at either end so that it can't slide out. Make sure when you're sliding the shaft through that the angle of the blades on each or the angle of the louvers on each stringer is the same. Otherwise, you'll be putting on louvers that will be twisted. Just feed that back through there. Takes a second. If I just do it by feel, push that through. No. There we go. And I'll just feed that through to the other end. <coughs> Now, fit a control handle, these little click-on handles, which are just little handles here, okay? If I've got three stringers, I'm going to have three winch boxes. There will be a winch box on every stringer. I can click a handle into all of them, but I really only want it in one of them, the one that I'm going to access to operate the product. So click in a handle. Before I put any louvers on at all, you want to just run it to make sure that it is nice and free, it's not caught up anywhere, it's not catching. Yep, nice and free. Okay. As I said, I've got a couple of louvers on the top section already. If I was doing an internal control set, obviously I would be running a shaft with a universal joint back in through to a wall inside my home. So if we're doing the internal control, what we're going to do is we're going to fit a universal. Now, these obviously a universal joint is a little joint which allows things to operate at a slight angle. <clears throat> so we're going to click the universal joint into the control box that we're then going to extend on through into the house. Now, the universal, this is supplied as part of the wall control set. So if you've ordered it as an external control, you won't get a universal linkage. You'll only get that when you order that for an internal application. So you want to mark the position and we're sharing a little diagram there with you. It's a pretty simple straightforward process but mark the position on the house wall for the wall control plates. You want to make sure there's no obstructions inside the house where you're going to be actually coming through with that. You drill a 16 millimeter hole through both the exterior and interior walls. You want to make sure that hole is Pretty true and pretty square. However, you'll find that um, on your wall plates, you'll get a ball joint. And that ball joint does accommodate up to about a 10 degree out of alignment. And the universal joint that's also you've, that are also fitted will allow you to have an angle no greater than 15 degrees from your wall control to the winder box. So you do have some flexibility there. You don't have to be perfectly level going through. So what we can see here, as I said, you've got the two wall plates, an outer wall plate and an inner wall plate. The outer wall plate is fitted first and then go inside 
get the actual shaft. So you'll get a square section of shaft, an extra section of shaft, which you'll get when you order the internal control. Slide that from the internal wall into that external winch box or internal, external winder. Mark it flush with the wall. What you're then going to do is you're then going to take that shaft and you're actually going to cut 10 millimetres off that shaft and that will then be exactly the right size shaft that you want. Carefully place the shaft back into the inner part of the outer wall plate. Careful you don't drop it and lodge it down into the wall. You'll have to get another piece and cut another piece. So make sure you don't drop that down through the actual wall there. And then it's really simple. Drill the screw holes, fix and locate that inside wall plate with some tapping screws, self-tapping screws, and you have screw covers as well, so you can dress it off quite nicely. So it's a nice, simple connection of those items there to get it uh, to get it all working. So I'll just show you what I mean by the um, the ball joint. Now that we're back sharing that uh, back on screen, so this is a a wall plate here, and you can see that that has some movement to it as well. And obviously the universal, which you would be clicking into the winch box. Obviously there's another universal joint there as well. So you get a reasonable amount of flexibility, but 15 degree maximum. So you do need to be conscious of that. <clears throat> Guys, really all the only thing I have to do now is come along with my panels and fit my panels. As I said, I've already fitted two on here. They've Really simple, straightforward. It's a very light construction product, but I will point out they're nice, they're beautifully sharply cut, so it's a lovely straight finish. But you could catch your hands, and I would recommend putting gloves on when you're fitting the panels just so that you're not cutting your fingers or your skin. So, really, it's just a matter of hooking onto the front and clicking down onto there hook it over the top and click on like that. Now we provide a clear plastic end cap for each louver. Strongly recommend you put them on for a couple of reasons. One, it looks quite nice. Two, it just covers off that sharp edge. So if someone was brushing past this, you don't want them to be catching themselves on that sharp edge. So there's now no sharp edges on that corner there that you can catch yourself on at all. Guys, that's adjustable Trinidad and a good run through on fixed Trinidad as well. It's a simple, straightforward product. It takes a little time to install. Yes, you do need to build part of it on the ground, that frame structure, and obviously if it's bigger than this, you may need the assistance of a second person to lift and hold that up into position when you're mounting the brackets. But it's nice, simple, light construction. That's a fantastic product for giving good sun and heat reflection whilst allowing that view through and airflow as well. All right, guys, that's the end of the session. I hope to see you again shortly. Cheers.